Five. Okay, hi everyone. We are continuing our design review of discrete computation for version 13 of Orphan Language. And where had we got to last time? We looked at some very lovely functions last time. Halfway down into geometry. Okay. All right, was there anything left over from this uh, earlier stuff? Don't think so. Okay. Is this all in the head branch build now? Because I've got some things I'm doing which could make use of this. Charles? Um, yes, but we are still um, you know, trying to sync everything. So, but yes, he's in the master branch. In headmaster. Right. Okay. Now, I don't think last time we had looked at this binary tree and so on thing, had we? Yes, because it was not quite, uh, Charles, it wasn't quite there, right, to look at. Well, it's, in principle, it's not there, but there is, I mean, we kind of agree that we should just support it. So it's just a matter of implementation. There's pretty much not, no documentation or change in design. No, but that's not right. There, there will be data structure documentation. I'm sorry, what, wait a minute. This is just saying that graph of that data structure will work. But presumably there is a property of the data structure. Yeah, there, the graph property of data structure. Right. How are you going to document the fact that this thing does the conversion? So if you open the documentation of graph, there is already a table there showing the list of objects. Can... Right. So what we've done for these omnivore kind of functions, like a lot of our list plot functions have become omnivores, is that we list the types and how it's treated. I don't, so I don't back, see this. I don't you have see to what... go back up, 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 up. There. Um, Stop. The where it says 12, 3, which is obviously not right. Why does it say 12, 3? Should that's say not a good way to present this. Come on. Just say data structure. Don't, don't, this is silly. Just say entity, entity dot, dot, dot. The name entity, right? Right? Yes. Does, does yes. The, does and and the what it should explain? Every... Yeah. Sorry. Well, the, the thought was first is that we, you know, we wanted to put an illustration. We haven't yet finished that. The point was, you know, we wanted a three column on the, you know, the first column have illustration essentially to show you entity, which in this case is usually a graph or molecule. I don't think it's, I, I think it can be the second thing. What I would do is say entity dot, dot, dot. And then what you should say in the third column is what it does, like for molecules, it's not a molecule object. It, it, it will say, it will give you the bond backbone of the molecule. Right. right. Well, no, I, this is not finished, right. but this is, this is what we've been doing for the plotting functions. Like how is that object interpreted? Yes, good. That's what we need. But I'm just saying, I think you should give the, the symbolic template of the object, like entity dot, dot, dot. But Christopher, you were about to say something. No, I mean, I was just gonna ask if the if the term ent is ever used anywhere, because otherwise there isn't really a point of like, yeah, you know, saying ent. It's, it's kind of pointless, I think. Anyway, okay, so we've got a plan for how to do this. Um, yeah, that's nice. I just wonder if there's anything else that graph should uh, should eat. What about a, a mesh? Why can't graph eat a mesh? Um. Probably not because there is no unique uh, way to canonicalize, and we have uh, we introduced a mesh okay. connectivity graph for that. I know. Okay, and I assume that graph points to things like mesh connectivity graph. Hmm, it doesn't. It should. It can't point to everything. I mean, maybe you should point to that one, but literally we have no, no, I know forty to fifty percent of the functionality of things that produce graph All right, in the fine. whole graph framework. So. Yeah, fair enough. I know so, it, but it shouldn't point to that, but it should point to things where it's like, I don't know, somehow they're, they are, uh, you know, diplomatic connections to other areas of the system. I mean, arguably, another area of the system that should. I think that to... part of what we intended to do is in the scope section to give, um, you know, to show. Because this is scope is mechanical. It's not really application driven. Yeah. Uh, it's, it explains the scope of the functionality. And this is one important sort of new constructor way. By the way, I, I'd like to comment on that. In uh, the, all the Sparkle stuff, 
doesn't that also produce graphs? And what is the what is the interconversion between these? Well, as far as I know, I did I don't think that there was a functionality in Sparkle who returned a graph, but yes, it's related to graph database and it should. But. Okay, the other thing is text structure. Shouldn't it eat that? I don't know whether that makes any sense. That probably doesn't make sense, but at least it should be diplomatically pointed to here. As another thing that produces graphs that you might not think would produce graphs. Okay, in any case, I'm sure it's on the guide page. Presumably it's on the guide page, yes? Things like text structure. Uh, I mean, these lists definitely should be on guide pages. Yes, they should. Gra be. Graph construction. Yes. Okay, all right. Let's keep going here. Uh, by the way, I wonder whether there is connection between the uh, trees documentation and the data structure document, the tree data structure documentation. I don't know whether the, I don't know whether every low level operation in the tree data structure is reflected in some high level operation. Okay. I think this is the wrong group. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. So we had renamed this. What did we rename it? CSG region. Okay. Um, okay. So had we finished going through the, the stuff about the CSG regions or not? Yes. Okay. And, and what is, I mean, so CSG tree and BVH tree would be what? Now th those come from, they are the actual tree structure. And how did they, oh, wait a minute, that's not there. No. CSG. Yeah, we haven't yet added the page. The page. So the, the thought is essentially several of those low level data structure in geometry, which is quite- Oh, I see, I see, I see. Those are, those are part of the data structure. Okay, so another thing that I don't know whether you're doing, you're aware of in documentation now, the, the multi-jointed see also's which can point to things other than other functions, right? You're using that stuff, are you? No, what are you talking no. about? We okay. don't even know about it. Multi-jointed see also have never been discussed. That term multi-jointed, I haven't, okay. I've so, never seen a multi-jointed see also, even on a postcard. Oh, for goodness sake, okay. Brian this probably happened in some private discussion. No, it was not someone. private. It's just you guys don't come to the monthly documentation meetings. No. Maybe somebody no, should. So maybe some representative from your group should be coming to those. I mean, we are or, all in T, T New Doc. Nothing was announced there. Right. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay. You need to track this down with, is Brady here? I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So you know what this is. Do you know what the, we're talking about here? You talk, we're talking about see also's that point to formats and everything else. Right. And Brian was doing a huge, you know, reverse engineering effort to add those. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, nobody communicated with Roger's team about this, which is kind of infuriating. If it communicated to T New Docs, everybody would know. It doesn't specifically need, I mean, there's other people that produce besides us. All right. So make sure that happens. And I mean, for goodness sake, let's get. A, a, a round of this. I mean, there's now ways to do that. That's the right way to reference, for example, a data structure. You Which see what I'm saying? Good. This would be yeah, good. I know. And entities and other things like that. So they're called multi-jointed. No, they're not. I just made that up. It's a, it's a terrible name. Yeah. They, they had Sounds some other like name. a robot arm. Yeah. They had some other name. Brady, do you remember the other name? No. <laughs> okay. Multi-type. Yeah, that would be reasonable. Multi-type. See also. It's a question from Lou on our live stream about uh, graph databases. This is the wrong group to talk about that. Neo4j and so on. We, we are already working on a bunch of that. We already have a bunch of stuff related to that in our... Uh, yeah, we already... But I don't think that's, that's not, so far as I know, relevant to what Charles is doing, right? It's a different, different problem. Mm. Yeah, well, not quite. Well, but... it's, well, it depends on the, the point of view, but I think it's, uh, we probably don't it's want... It's a different group. It's a, it's it's a different that group. That, that yeah, it's, and it's the wrong time, so... Yep, the wrong time. Okay. All right. Reconstruct regions from point cloud data. What is this? 
Okay, <clears throat> there are two kinds of things here. So let me, you have to go to the pages, but the so region fits, it fits primitives, okay? So for instance, in an AR environment, you typically want to fit, for instance, a plane to be a table that you can set things down on type of thing. This is what this one does. It fits individual oh. pr primitives. Let me understand the relationship between this and, uh, you know, in, a, in an image processing, finding image lines, for example, or image so The input there is image. I understand not, not that. point data. This is point data. So this is point cloud data or point data. I know that. But the question is, should there be a generalization? I mean, should there be similarly for an image? We would like to. We've tried line. to get that going for image, a, a general function like this for image. Um, in which case it would be called probably image fit, let's say. No, that's not right. Because or, region, no, what, what's coming? Hold on. I would have thought that this should be called point cloud fit. Because it's actually fitting. No, it's fitting regions. I mean, you, but, you're but talking about the, the input data. Yeah, but what, what do you mean? Where's the input data? P1, P2. Those are points, yeah, aren't exactly. they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, but it, it, it is. In our naming convention, shouldn't that then be fit region, since what's coming out is a region, not what's going in? <sighs> yeah. But what would you name it then? Point cloud fit region? Or point cloud region? No, we need an actual point cloud region. We need to deal I with see. point clouds. Point fit region? I mean, we have, let's see, we have things like list point plot 3D. Yes. Right? This is kind of an inverse. Not really an inverse, but it's no, a, not really. It's, it's in the family of list it's, point it's, plot three D. Yes, sort of. Yes. I mean, I would be point. And how many? Well, uh, yeah. Actually, point fit region is not terrible, not great, but not terrible. Actually, I'm thinking about. Let me think. Yeah. So we're saying. So we also kind of, you know, keep that in that family of region fit, region convert, because there's a suite of family of, you know, region for construction to fit or to convert, where, you know- What does region is, convert to? Essentially, it converts between representation. So you can take a disk- and I know, but it eats it. regions. And produces right. regions. regions. Right, this doesn't eat regions. But we're also exploring the, the, the potential of extending it so to actually cover all regions. Other than just points. Yes. No, no. You, you, uh, the, the model space, what kinds of region can it fit? It is can it like, be fit too, but that's different uh, from can it eat? Yes. I mean, could it eat? Will it one day be able to eat lines? I doubt it. All right, let me ask this question. This no. this reminds me. No, it, it will. This should, if it's something that we're gonna have. Yeah, this is. This, this okay, let me remind you. Image graphics is an example of something vaguely like this, right? Which eats images and gives graphics. Sure. And we remember it because you know image graphics. I'm not confused about which way around it is. It eats regions. It gives uh, eats images and gives graphics. Yeah. I, that's why I think your name is not totally bad, actually. It's, 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 it's sort of, it's along those lines. I mean, is we can't the, have full sentences in names. I mean, no, I know. I know. Sometimes I know. do, but. Point. Point fit region. Point fitted, point fitting, point fitting region. Point fit uh, region. Should it have should it have find in the name, like find oh, yeah. fit? I mean, is is this now? I mean, because I guess we have find for for when it's sort of uh, you know when it's sort of approximate, or maybe if it's local approximate uh, local optimization or something, or if there are multiple possible solutions. Probably start with find, right? Like find. 
point region. Which is wrong because yeah. po point points is points are regions. You know, regions can have any dimension. So, okay. Well, what's an analogous thing? I agree that find is not a terrible. So, well, you know, maybe, maybe I'm looking. I'm I'm looking on the same thing. But you know, one 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 point of keeping region at least around was essentially to not actually lock the design. Right, in terms of, you know, there, there's case where somebody can give you, a, you know, a bunch of lines and they say, find the cylinder that fit those lines, right? So there is those generalities, you know, generalization. Where and why don't you just say find region? If you think you're going to generalize it that way, just call it find region. And you give it a bunch of points or you give it some other primitives. That sounds really general. Yeah. I don't know. Find region doesn't sound, I mean, maybe like find region fit or something. Find fitting region. I don't know. I feel like it needs to have a word like fit in it. Yeah. Find region fit was an earlier name. It was like, that's too many. Find fitting region. Fit is already uh, an approximation. So. And also we have all the, you know, linear regression fit and so, so we kind of kept that in that same style. <sighs> Bob observes on our live stream that if, if our language was based on Chinese rather than English, we would be making up kanji all the time. Yes. Yes. Probably. Well, I was so proud of figuring out that thing, um, Wu, Wu Lan. This, um, the fact that there's a thing that Wu Lan, which sounds kind of sounds like, like Wolfram language, is tungsten wolf has a version that is pronounced like that and tungsten has its own its own um uh character say that again tungsten wolf you see yeah, tungsten wolf okay so if you translate tungsten wolf into chinese there is um uh, you know there, there are definite kanji for those uh, they're definite what are they called in chinese they're not called kanji that's the japanese name De definite characters chinese characters for um for tungsten, they, that was one of the last standardized things they put in all the ones for all the elements up okay. to some point. And there's one for wolf. And there is some kind of pronunciation that is something like Wu Lan, which is kind of like a wolf language sounding thing. Um, so that almost has a Chinese character. Well, it's two characters. Two characters. I think it's two. Yeah. Okay. The question was, well, how does this relate to circle fit? How does this relate to, I mean, can you just run like question mark star so, fit star or something? Yeah. I what mean, does it do? What does circle fit do? Circle fit seems to be a special case of that function. So. Okay. That's good. Oh, it's by Sander who was commenting on it. Okay. Well, I wonder whether it does, whether it achieves the same thing. So does it achieve the same contracts about what it's minimizing and so on? Um, so this one, they're probably minimizing, the, they're doing a least square regression. Probably, yes, the same. So the, what region fit is doing is essentially is doing a ransack method, which is kind of standard techniques. And then at the end, we do a lean, you know, linear fit to minimize the distance. So it should probably give pretty much the same thing. OK. Um, OK, so, and there's another one called line fit, apparently. Oh, wow. We should look at these. Yeah, there's a question here. I mean, okay. What does line fit? I see it returns an actual line primitive. What does what does the proposed find region return? The same thing. So it returns actual the line. In this case, also an infinite line. A circle return a circle. So it actually returns a geometric object. And why are these in quotes? Given that they're actual primitives. I think those are the second argument when you want to specify what type of region you want to get back. Right, but why aren't they just the name of the region? I mean, why do they have to be? I mean, it's quotes? the same like with bounding region. Like with bounding region, you say quotes, you know, uh, minimal sphere or sphere or, you know, whatever. Like, I mean, right. and also there's stuff like plane in there. 
Well, in this case, we can probably add, I mean, we are still updating the question, but it's probably, you know, the name, you know, match pretty much the, the third column there. So it's possible that we just keep the same board. So except for line where we return an infinite line, which is different. Uh, well, that's a good reason to have the quoted version. Right. Could you return just to, I mean, you might want to return the ordinary line, not the infinite line with, with boundary, you know, with ends. Right. Right. Wouldn't that be useful? Um, in some cases, but it's defined of you know how to bound it. So it's you know there are several choices, but yes. Okay, but but okay. So what we've got here, look, this is okay. I I have to say I think find fitting region or some such other thing is the best name for this. Given given your goals for it. I mean, find fitting region. What's wrong with that name? I kind of like that name. It is finding a region that is a, a fit to the thing you have given as input. I'm not, I'm not sure we use the word fitting anywhere. We usually just call it a fit, don't we? Yes. Find region fit. But find region fit is more obscure. Because what the other fit functions. I mean, region fit would be completely in line with those names that you saw in the functional repository, line fit. Yes, I know, but the, the, that's not the same thing. Linear model fit, what does that do? It that, fits a linear model. So it returns a linear model. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Well, I admit that most of these fit functions do return the thing they say. I mean, I think it's honestly, I mean, I think that region fit probably is the consistent name. It's just that I, it does sound a little bit strange. All right. Um. No square, an association with the center. Wait a minute. There's no square. There's a square here. What's? Yeah. This seems like a useful function, by the way. Very. But now my question is, OK. In an abuse of this function, so how much of an abuse of this function will this be to find? I see. This is this is to find a geometrically described thing. It is not to find a fit, you know, a polynomial. I mean, you, if I fit a Bezier curve to something, am I not effectively fitting? You know, okay. How would I otherwise? Okay. <laughs> Let's say I have a bunch of random data and I want to fit a Bezier curve to it. How do I do that right now? Um, so we are planning to, you know, add actually support for curve in 13.1 on the next coming version. But yes, you should be able to. No, you, you would have well, to set up the parameters and then you would have to. Um, you but know, if, like I, if I want to find a polynomial fit, I, I just say find fit or whatever, and I can find a polynomial fit to something. I'm just wondering, do we have existing Bezier curve fitting? No. no. Okay, fine. So this would be our Bezier curve fitting. Right. The, the, the Bezier curves themselves have a parametrization that's made for user interfaces, if you see what I'm saying. There is a fitting too, which is baked into interpolation. That solves an interpolation problem. That is literally a fitting oriented problem. Uh, right. I mean, the but but the I design have for Beziers and NURBS is that those are basically user interfaces. You design the convex hull of the curve, you know, so those are kind of like correct interfaces to those. Look, the concern that I have here is if people end up using this a bunch to fit lines mm -hmm. and things, this is a very weird name. You know, in other words, somebody's doing some elementary. I mean, I don't know whether this is. Well, but, you know, but the, the whole point is it's returning a geometric primitive, right? I mean, if you're just trying to fit a line, I mean, I guess you could use it if you just want to plot a regression line on top well, of your data. Well, that's what Sander had done here. 
nicely, rather nicely. Look at this thing. He's got, well, he's got it as an epilogue here. That's kind of cool. I mean, yeah, because honestly, right now, doing that with, I mean, you can do it with stuff like find fit, but you have to write out the equation of a line. And if you it's do it terrible. with linear model fit, linear model fit, honestly, is kind of weird. And like, you always have to give it your data and then comma X, comma X. Yeah. And then, you know, I don't we, know. We, should, we should put something to look at the workflow for the fitting functions, because it really is pretty terrible right now. The, yes. In other words. Yes. That's the whole yes, that's the whole regression world that's needed attention way more than support of quantities and shit. And less than time series. Okay. But is that something that's on the near term list, Roger? Yeah, but if we do time series, we do time series. We're then doing time series. Yeah, that Oops. thing you put there in a the second place, I would call a model structure. And a neural net is a model structure. Which in the second, in which second place? The model, you know, where you say what you, you know, if it's linear, you just give a set of bases. But if it's nonlinear, you give the whole expression with variables in the place where you wanted them to be fitted. And that is a model structure. And a neural net is an example of a model structure. Yeah, but that's a very general concept. And I mean, the fact is, you know, fitting a, you know, regression line to some data, fitting, you know, being able to plot a fit along with data is a much more basic thing. And I think we should look at that workflow before we solve the absolutely general problem. Maybe we can actually solve that stuff for the fitting functions we have right now before we start building new fitting functions. Am I making sense? I mean, it seems like part of the problem with the design, or like, I mean, okay, at, at some level, it's nice to have super general unified fitting functions like this, but then also, I, I don't know. I mean, there, there are different cases for fitting where like it, the it's just weird line having case. one function. Yeah, like, the, like the, if you just want to put a regression line, it, it feels weird to be calling a function for fitting a, a region, although you know, crazy. It no, no, makes no, just as much sense. That, that's that's that, but, I mean, no, no, but just well, I don't think it's scenario. confused. I mean, it's very confused. What if you do a regression line, you do a regression line. If you fit the primitive, like you get point data in the world, like point cloud data, that's a different thing. No, you exactly. Know? Right. But, but you can fit a regression line. I mean, it's the same mathematically. If you just say line as the second argument what? to the region fit. It's, it will give you a regression line, right? And, and that's fine. But I mean, it's just sort of, I think that's kind of slightly the weird thing is that really there could be one unified function that basically does all of the, the, the or all the fitting that returns a primitive, let's say, although maybe you could even unify with things that return you know, polynomials. I don't think stuff. you want that, right? But, because... but you don't want it. No, exactly. That, that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this will basically no, be the, the, a the, huge- We have many, 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 many fitting functions. And they vary in their workflows. We can fit the distribution. We can fit a stochastic process. We can fit a, a point process. We can fit all kinds of things. And the, 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 the nature of data and the nature of models vary. So, sure, but, but I mean, but, right. But I mean, I'm just saying that basically, just in terms of, of talking about these other fitting functions, I mean, I think this is fine, but it's just... Uh, you know, yeah, that, at some level, they all look the same. They all take the data in the first argument and the model in the second argument. Yes. Right, but there is also the, the there is also a matter of goal, right? And you know, and the the goal defined the technique and the level of fitting as well as you know, look the, the stupid of thing fit. right now is very straightforwardly stupid, right? Find fit does not return. There's no way to get find fit to just return the formula. You have to retype the formula. That's dumb. And perhaps it could be fixed just by having a property or something. Am I making sense? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Just... Okay. And I suspect that is an easy fix. And I think we should discuss it in some other meeting, maybe an LCC meeting, and just take a look at that issue and see whether there's an easy way to do it before we, before we dredge up the giant monster of you know, new model mechanisms. 
This may be a really straightforward thing to fix. That function is quite old and was built before some of the modern frameworks that we have for properties and so on. Yes. So Brady, can you get that on an LCC meeting agenda, please? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. There are comments here about, Sandra's asking, can one add weights? Can one add weighted data for these points here? Uh, at this time, no. But is that in the plan? I mean, that would work, presumably, to say weighted data there. Yes, there's, you know, weights, you know, normals. There is a lot of other parameter you can ask, right? So. Okay. Um, next question. I mean, is there an operator form of region fit? No. Okay. Why not? Because the heavyweight operation is the fitting. Right. So what? And I mean, it doesn't matter. It's just a syntactic issue. Right? So I'm asking. It, it, I mean, it can be built, but I mean, what's the advantage? That's the whole point. It's the advantage is to be able to say region fit of circle, map it over a bunch of data. That's all. Oh, okay. not a big deal. Yeah. We could, we could I'm, I'm not sure it's a good idea. I mean, I'm just throwing it out. Okay, but let's look at this function. Okay, so this function. All right, so perhaps what the right thing is the string names, where as a courtesy, it can accept the symbols, I suppose. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. Okay. I see. So this is a multi point. So the first argument can either be naked coordinates, is that correct? Yes. Or it can be point primitives. Okay, right. and then, then in the future, those could be line primitives and things like that. Yes. This is a nice function. So I've got another question. The, something that this should relate to is, and probably link to, is things like circle through. You're aware of that function, right? Yes. Yes, we wrote it. You wrote it? Oh, OK. I thought there, are more, other there, there are more of these circle constructors. Right. But I mean, in, but this will presumably agree with that function. Yes, oh. if all the points are on the circle, yeah, we return the exact fit. OK, what about polyhedron? Yeah, do we have polyhedron? No, let him make any so sense. That, no, let's let's go to back to the design document. And so we have two other functions that do a so this is a single primitive, and this this is like having a parametric model. All of these um, yeah. primitives are sort of constraints, you know. Yeah, they have a small number of parameters. Right. Okay. The two other ones that come down there, Poisson mesh and concave hull mesh, are ways to reconstruct. Oh, concave hull mesh. That's nice. We've had a we've had a. WFR function that I've used extensively that I think is doing that. Okay. That, that's a thing written by Chip Hurst, I think. I've used it extensively. What is it called? It's called, Chris, do you remember what that's called? I think it's concave hull mesh. It might be. Oh, non-convex hull mesh. Okay. Seems like a longer way of saying concave hull mesh. Well, is it in fact concave, or, or I mean, no, well, it's not concave. It can be. It can be con. Well, oh, con yeah. Well, well, the term of concave hull is per se really per se not well defined, right? I mean, it's not unique per se. Right? So, also, it might not be concave, it. right? No, right. it might not right. be concave, which is why non-convex seems like a better name. Well, it could be. It could also be convex. I mean, so calling it non-convex has the same problem. It does. Well, um, we can look at them because they have sort of their own. They reconstruct with using sort of different mechanisms. So the results you get are slightly different. So this one, you know, essentially, you need basically um, points with normals. I thought you needed normals, didn't you? Yes, you need normal. If there's no normal, we try, we, we compute normal. 
But the input there doesn't show the normals. What is what does it mean, Poisson surface? What what does that mean? Why so is it, it called means, Poisson surface? It means that we know the gradients, basically. Um, what the hell does that have to do with Poisson? Like Poisson's equation or Poisson? Yeah, so, 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 so then mean? you take the divergence of that and you get a Poisson equation. It's Laplacian equal to something on the well, right hand and side. Boy, this is confusing because people talk about Poisson sprinkling which is the inverse operation to this. Well, Poisson Given... has, well, you know, we have Poisson processes and Poisson it's point death. processes and... All right, okay. It's all very fishy. It's all very... <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you know that much French, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay, but in any case, so the point here, this is a mesh constructor that is doing what? It's effectively solving Poisson's equation somehow? Yes. I mean, can one think about those as charges or something? Or what, 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 is the, what is the sense in which it's solving Poisson's equation? Think of them so, as a great, as a, as a well, as a, as, as a characteristic function with that wall, the, the gradients, the points outwards, or does it point inwards? I don't know, which they well, point one direction it, consistently. Right. So inwards. So essentially, if you really think about it, it's you know, you are trying to find actually the indicator function, where you know at you know, you know it's constant everywhere except at the boundary. So at the boundary you have the gradient. So essentially, if you think about this, it's kind of a least square minimization of your you know indicator function. The gradient should be equal to the normal, and that can be you know easily equivalent to the you know Laplacian. Right, which much of the different the divergent okay. at the boundary. So. so listen, I have been a fairly serious user of non-convex hull mesh. Okay, so I can tell you that its sensitivity parameter is fairly important. The, the, wait, you come to that next. That's concave hull mesh. It's a different I know, I know, okay. I know, I know, I know. I'm I'm jumping ahead to that. Okay. I see. Of the specified parameter, that is that the sensitivity parameter, basically. Um, right, we don't call it sensitive parameter for us. So it's actually the alpha shape, where alpha is the size of the ball, from the reconstruction technique. Okay, well, you should you should not call it. You should say something like, "I bet this is the same type of thing here. That this is a ball size." We need to illustrate that, Charles. This, this, we need to iterate on that. We need to see that the alpha, how alpha relates to those circles, those balls. Yeah, this is a, totally obscure. This has got to say, this is somehow the, the granularity or something. We, we are working on that. You see below the details, we're kind of, you know, I'm still working on that, trying to explain exactly the construction. Well, I know, but I'm, I'm saying what I, what I suggest you do is, let's see, scale size parameter or something. Something like that. I mean, because this reminds one of like, you know, when you're computing Hausdorff dimension, for example, you're putting balls over a thing. Am I making sense? Yes. Yes. It's amazing. We still don't have, we've had endless people have written them, the thing that estimates, I mean, we, we've now got for the physics project, endless dimension estimators, which we probably should package in some kind of dimension estimate thing for points and graphs. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then, so if you go spelunking in the function repository, you will find a whole bunch of different, of dimension estimators with different methods and so on. Are they consistent? In, in terms of the results they give? Yeah. Um, well, there's whole papers about that. Jonathan has written a bunch of papers and various other people are writing papers about that. The answer is, in the end, for these hypergraph things, the incredibly straightforward dimension estimator that I came up with years ago seems to be actually the best. And there are much more elaborate ones that are more sensitive to all kinds of issues. And best is defined how? Most robust. And, and has good convergence and so on. I mean, it's, it's really straightforward and it's really based on, it's just looking at the, you know, the volume of GD balls of increasing sizes and looking at their growth rate. It's a very straightforward thing. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we, we should have a dimension estimate function. It, it's silly not to. Um, okay, but, but here, I'm not keen on the name concave hull mesh because I understand that convex hull mesh makes perfect sense. What, what are these things called in the literature? Alpha shapes. Oh, convex hull mesh too, an alpha shape. Those are the two common. Okay, well, we're not going to call it alpha shape. I didn't even know an alpha shape. I've heard of alpha shapes. I didn't know alpha shapes were just con. Okay. I think alpha is the one over radius in those balls or something like that. Right. Well, maybe we need a different kind of name altogether. I mean, given that we're having Poisson meshes, which are not. Okay. What is this mesh really? It's a mesh. that is approximating down to some scale size. Yes, roughly, roughly yes. But it's a hull. I mean, that's the important thing, it's a hull. I don't know, hull seems a, not the best of names to me. But hull is important because it's the exterior boundary of the thing. Yeah, but hull means I mean, we have affine holes, we have linear holes, we have convex holes, we have conic holes. I know, but hull means the outer boundary, and that's what we're getting here. We're not approximating the whole thing. We're approximating the outer boundary, which is different from region fit, which is attempting to fit all the points, presumably. Mm. Is that correct? Well, in this case, let's just say the boundary, because you can actually have an actual hole inside. So it's not per se... It's so what do you mean? So this is the boundary. It's a hull. It's no, the, you can have a hole yes, inside. Yes, okay. it's not the outer boundary. Hull. Wait a minute. What are you saying? A hole or a hull? Um, I mean, you said outer boundary. We may have mm -hmm. inner boundary. That's what I mean. So yes, it's a hole, but we can have holes inside the, the object. I'm the sorry, result. Charles. It's one of these cases. But you can make a donut I shape. I can make it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. You could make a donut, though, is the point. Yes, but that doesn't have a hole. No, you can uh, have I mean, a polygon sorry, with holes. We should, use, we should use voids. Okay, so this is the confusing 3D thing. There's holes in the sense of topological holes, like in a donut. Then there are voids that are inner voids in a region. And so they're not the same, voids and holes. Okay, yes. I was imagining more of an annulus than a torus. So you can have a 2D donut, let's say, with a void in the middle of it. Right. This is a typical example of a use of the non-convex hull thing. You see this object? Yeah. So that was a graph, which was done with graph layout. And then this is the, the filled-in boundary. And I, I think there are other... Yeah, see, there's a good example. Now, now I assume that your non-convex hull thing... Would, would be able to do this too, should be able to, right? Yeah. Can we get that? some of that data? Would be useful, yeah. actually. Yeah, trivially. It's click to copy, and guess what? When you click to copy it, and then you... It actually copies it? Paste it, and there it is. Oh, graph reconstructed surface. Okay, so that's another function there. Well, I was going to ask, I mean, when is that reconstruction taking advantage of, of the edges, or is it just looking at the points? I am not sure. Let's look at graph reconstructed surface. I can't remember. Because if it's using the edges, then this is probably a totally different mechanism. Yeah, I, I think it is not that sophisticated, but let's take a look. Huh. Oh, yeah, it just uses this. And it's right. probably rely on the fact that you know it generates the layout from spring electrical and rely on those points. So yes, that's right. Right, but look at the top detail. So, so it's kind of analogous, but it's it's I don't know, it's removing triangles instead of edges or something. I, I don't really know. It's probably drawing a Delaunay triangularization right, by the closeness point. Yeah, well, I mean you can we can look. But I think okay, so you guys will look at this. And this is a good sample. If you can reconstruct that, that's a nice thing. And, and the default thing that I was doing there, the common thing that I've done is that's obviously some opacity been applied, right? 
to um, I'm sure this one is probably the same thing, right? This is also one that has the reconstruction included. Aren't these cool? <laughs> no. Anyway. Um, okay. Well, I mean, right, maybe so. there could be a more general name for this, the, the concave. I don't know. Like if it was just something like, um, you know, something for taking point, point clouds and making a mesh. Well, it, I mean, we, we cannot go that general, right? Because it depends on the technique we use to actually reconstruct, right? Like this graph construction surface depends highly on the spring electrical. So it's... Uh, well, but it's given the graph push. embedding, it is what it is. Right, exactly. So, it's... But listen, right, the uh, term reconstructed surface seems like a generic term that's being used. Yeah. And that's also sometimes called reverse engineering. Well, yes, but that's, I think, okay, so wait a minute. So this is, but the thing it's returning is a mesh, right? Yes. Probably a, is it a boundary mesh region? No, or just a mesh it? region. Okay. I you mean, don't have a guarantee that it's a solid object, right? So you cannot return a boundary mesh region. Wait, is, is I, this is an off topic question, but is boundary mesh region ever going to support holes or is that a, not what it's supposed to do? It supports holes. Yeah. Oh, it, it does. does. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. But so then why? Sorry, then I, I don't quite understand. I mean, couldn't this return? No, so, I mean, if it's representing a hull, right? No, you see, this one generates the surface, right? You reconstruct roughly speaking the surface. Right. If I think probably there's an example downstairs, you can, depending on your parameter alpha, actually your surface may not even have holes. I mean, may not even be, you know, completely closed is what I mean. But we don't, probably don't have it here. So that's okay, why at the end fine. you just want yeah. the mesh region than the boundary mesh region. Okay. So. By the way, we're scheduled for another design review, which is a direct continuation of this, but we're obviously not finished with this. So that will be pushed back by a few minutes. Um, okay, so wait a minute. It's a very technical name. I mean, this thing is a generally reconstructed surface from my points. Oh boy. On the other hand, you're saying it is returning a mesh. I mean, I mean, could it have, okay, maybe this, could it have the word fit or no, because all the, it goes through all the points, right? It, we, we picked this name because, I mean, it's, it's a well-known name people use when you do surface reconstruction. Uh, it's obscure. It's as obscure as alpha shape. <laughs> Look, what about reconstructed surface mesh? It's too general. Well, I mean, if we why why is that too general? Well, I mean, here's the question, I guess. I mean, if we, I, mean, I guess maybe convex hull mesh is already another method for making a reconstructed surface mesh, but, but like, you know, forgetting about that, if there were other methods that we would support, would we want them to be in separate functions or would we want them just to be method options for this function? Right. I think that's a, that's a key thing. There's another extension going forward. Let's say that we get other composite forms I mean, and in fact, there is another fitting to fit these um, CSG regions. But going forward, we'll have NURBS regions, and then we want to also reconstruct NURBS regions. And why isn't that not just a second argument to this? Why isn't the second argument to this? If this is a, I mean, won't the NURBS regions also have, they'll also have a tolerance of some kind. I mean, what about the possibility of calling the, the um, size of the ball tolerance uh, tolerance option and make this thing reconstructed surface mesh and expect that the second argument will be, I mean, this is a piecewise linear well, reconstructed surface so mesh, is it not? If it's mesh, it can't well, return a nerve, I don't think. No. Well, so there is two approaches, at least when we're thinking about this, right? We can have a general function to just do reconstruction and then we have a second argument or method option to do that, right? Or we can also, you know, 
or we need in some cases like here and produce special function like Poisson mesh, which is well known when you want to do reconstruction, right? So it's I've nice. never heard of Poisson mesh. So I would never use Poisson mesh and I wouldn't know what it was. And I would think yeah. it was something quite technical. That's true. Like some people never use Meyer G or PFG. No, I understand that. But, but, but reconstructing a surface is something people, I mean, people so use. I think we should get to, so, so I think we should get to that function. Okay. I just think it's like a tad bit early for us to introduce it. Okay. But, but hold on, hold on. We've already got list surface plot 3D, right? We've already committed to the surface word for something which is somehow going through a set of points, right? List surface plot 3D is the plotting analog of this function. Is that a true statement? Oh, but different results, yes. Why is it different results? Because it uses completely different techniques. Okay, but could we not get, I mean, if I wanted a mesh that corresponded to the output of list surface plot 3D, how do I get it? Uh, we don't have a function for that right now. But we should, presumably. What would it, what, what would it in terms of the structure of the function, how would it be different from this function? You give it a bunch of points and it returns to you a surface of some kind. Right. Correct? Right. But then the question is that what surface is it returning you? What's the model behind? Right. So that's kind of important, right? What you, yes. What are outliers? Yeah. Because one of the problems with list surface plot and list curve plot, the 2D, the curve, you know, the curve analog, is that it works pretty decent when there's a dense set of points on a surface. And it works really badly when you have a very wild set of points or things that are, you know, if you just regenerate a random set of points, for instance, there's no, there is no actual surface. You were just testing it. Um, right. Okay, look, the problem is convert, concave hull is completely, does not tell me anything about the method. You know, it's just not a... Um, yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I don't think it tells very much either. It's just, uh, it's like, how do people come up with names for things? I mean, when you actually think about sort of the names and they're not functional, you wonder, it's like, how did anybody come up with that name? Right. So, I mean, Rich on our, uh, I should be suggesting tight fitting hull, which is, yeah, I mean, it's a, I wonder if there's a, a, a fit -a fitting hull or something like that. Uh, again, though, I mean, are, are we are we trying to name just this method, or are we also trying to name you know the method that returns nerves and stuff too? Well, I no. think nerves don't return a mesh, so that they're out of the game. Well, okay, but I mean, I guess the, the question is, well, let's you know, surface if, plot let's say there 3D. Are five different types of things you might try and return, or, or like you know methods you would use, etc. Do we want to have five different functions, or do we want to have one unified function? That's the key question, Christopher. I agree with that, and. These are basically the things that we're proposing here are kind of like two methods that have some recognition. Right. right. So the, the thing is, people, let's take me as a sample user, okay? I wanted to make these surface reconstructions, right, for these graphs. My, you know, I am not going to go and, you know, I'm a non-expert huller, so to speak. So it's something where if there's a function that is called surface reconstruction mesh or something like this, reconstructed surface mesh or some, some such thing like that, I'll go to that function. I'll just use it. And hopefully we'll be giving us, will be giving me, you know, a reasonable method to use for that. That is what we should be doing. Now, maybe we're not ready to do that yet. Maybe we have to put in more specialized functions first. I'm not sure, although I have to say the non-convex hull, you know, thing that I was using from the, or, or this graph reconstructed surface, they work pretty well. Well, I mean, let's just start with one thing. I think it works in 2D as well, in which case you don't reconstruct the surface, right? Right. Okay. And, you know, I perfectly agree that we can have a general function to, you know, to do that, but we also have to balance in, in, you know, in terms of, you know, when you really want, 
you know, you are really you really want to do a reconstruction. You know a method, you know, based on your data. Oh, great. So so then you use the method option. If if it's that, I mean, clearly we have many cases where people in principle use method options, although they don't usually. They usually use the automated system. But I mean, sometimes there are dramatically different things that you get out: solve versus reduce, or something like that. Yeah. But in well, this case, uh, it's I, not going to be dramatically it's... different. I think it's a little bit like machine learning. There's some name recognition here. You know, I don't think it's... Yeah, and, and let yet. me tell you, in machine learning, I would like to point out that the tremendous success of, of predict and classify, as opposed to calling them, you know, logic, regression, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, support vector machines. Right. We don't, you know, somewhere inside there, it's, it's nearest neighbor, it's, it's whatever. We just don't use that. We just use predict and classify, and that's a very successful thing. And so similarly here, I would have thought, um, you know, in the end, okay, so question, there's a 2D version, there's a 3D version. Is that true? Is there a 4D version of this reconstruction? Not yet, because we don't have meshes in 4D yet. Which reconstruction? The one we're talking about here, the concave hull reconstruction. Right. I mean, yeah, it's possible to, general, to generalize the ND version, yes, but we don't have a representation. Right. I mean, you know, notice that it's list plot and list plot 3D. Although that, we could in that, principle have that, list that, plot. That, that had to do, that's an old convention because the rendering techniques are so, uh, you know, we're so different. Well, they are still so different. We, you know, I, I just remind you, it's an awkward fact about the universe, that at least as far as we perceive it, it actually just has about three dimensions. No, no, but I mean, the, the point is, is that list, you know, the, 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 the sort of graphics primitives and stuff like that, when you're displaying things and when you're visualizing things in 2D versus 3D are totally different. But for a mesh that you're just computing with, yeah, they're, okay. they're not, I mean. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, but, but so, okay, f fair we, point. We even have 1D meshes, just to. No, I know, I've used them, yes. Um, all right, so the point here is, Should we go with these more specific names that relate to, which is sort of, I think it's leading up to what you're talking about, sort of a grander name. Uh, but you but, know, it, it reminds me of the of some of the things in image processing, which are also not very successful, where they where they're very specific. You know, yeah, like Chamber is a binarized type. Exactly, people just want binarized. Right. Nobody can remember what what the, that, and it, it's up to us to automate the methods. Right. Um, look, what would we call the general function that returns a mesh and it is a, you know, I mean, what would it be? Fitted, fitted, something, approximated. Fitted mesh, fitted what mesh. About, what about surface? Do we want surface instead no. of mesh? Well, no, no we, we don't. It's a different function. Yeah. We don't, it, because it isn't just a two, in, in 3D. Among right, it's in 1D and 2D and 3D and eventually, you know, ND. And I guess manifold or something is too obscure. Yeah, and it's it also isn't a manifold. I hate manifolds. Hmm. It's just one step away from disks, as I usually can. <laughs> well, you should. Uh, Jonathan has been has been trying to make this topos theoretic version of the reals. That gets okay. around. What's that? Okay. But wasn't that exist already? Isn't that the definition of a topos by default? Is an extension of the reals? Uh, this is some. This is. Uh, I can't represent this. This is an attempt to. Um, I don't know. I don't know. No, it's. I mean, there's. That. I can't. I cannot usefully represent this. Um. No, but the, the thing is that manifolds are great when you can surf on them, but we can't name things after manifolds because we, you know, we represent right. things that are strictly more general than manifolds and we need sure. to. Okay. But so what, what by, by the way, I mean, just, it's fine if these are separate functions, but what will the NURB function be called? It will end and in will NURB. It be are we going to put NURB in function names? Are we going to call what, them NURB? Yes. yes Why don't we don't say fitted region? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. 
but, but, rate, John, and then we have a second argument to define what type of fit. It, you know, if you want a nub, you want a mesh. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We can't have region fit and fitted region. Well, maybe it could be in region fit, but it makes it a bit too much stuff in that function, maybe. Unless unless fitted unless region fit becomes fitted region. <sighs> I think that, I mean, I think we're talking about two key scenarios here, if we break it down. So the, the first scenario we started looking at, this is when you have a, a, a primitive that's kind of rigid, like a disk or a circle is very rigid. It can only represent literally circles. Okay. And it's going to make that fit. You know, it's going to fit to that. It's going to like snap to that model. Then you have something that's super flexible, like a mesh and a NURB for that matter. You know, at least compared to a circle, it's super flexible. And they, the, the kind of way that you control model complexity and other things has to be different from, yeah. you know, when you fit the circle. Right. Okay. And, also and, and also the, the, the circle case, I mean, the, this will, all the corners will be points in your data, right? And in the circle case, the circle doesn't even have to go through any of your points. Right, and also the fitted one, you know, we assume you, you know, you, the noise, the data is noisy and outliers, right? And, you know, we have all the control for that. L Where let me remind you that in, a, in this concave thing, it is not the case. With a convex hull, there's a well-defined set of things that you go through. I see what you're saying. The concave hull still goes through things. It's just a question of which things it goes through. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like in the alpha shapes, you know, that, that ball says, you know, it's like, is it going to be inside or is it going to be the, at the hull? What about fitted hull mesh? Because it's a hull, because it does go through the points. Mm. And what about fitted region for the cell? But see, the, the thing is, the problem with region fit okay, is that, as you just pointed out, these are named regions that you're fitting to. I mean, if I see something yeah. like probit model fit, it's fitting a probit model to the data, right? But region is a much more general thing. A region could be a boundary mesh, you know, region. Yeah. It's, what this really is, is that it's a name region fit. Right, or special region fit or something. Right, but, but this isn't, so what, so... That all of these kinds of things, they have a certain kind of model defined at the beginning here. Yeah. In, right. in probability and statistics, we had the following situation, like say with random variables. We had these parametric distribution that are kind of rigid, like a circle. Um, and there is an estimated distribution. Right. That gives you the distribution object out. You know, if you specify it, um, you, you, right. You, so, so you say estimated distribution of a of a normal distribution of something, yeah. comma the data. Right. You know, so data comma that data comma model. Then then we have also non-parametric distributions. So you can have something called like a histogram distribution, and that thing basically swallows the data. I know. And, and but so, so estimated distribution is the analog. It's the one that is fitting to a named known special distribution, so to speak. Yeah. 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 which makes it seem like estimated region. See, that isn't quite right because it's, because the whole point is distribution, the distribution brand is primarily special distributions like normal distribution and so on. It is yeah. not histogram. I, I understand it has, you know, histogram distribution and so on in there as well, which are the analog of, of, a, of a, a, a mesh. Yeah, or kernel, which is sort of the analog of uh, NURBS. You know, these <laughs> smooth kernel, these smooth kernel distributions. Right. Okay. So, okay. So what we have, okay. So what we're doing here. So one thing is we're fitting to, okay. We're fitting to a particular set of, of primitives. Mm-hmm. But 
Are we, in fact, that thing returns actual primitives, right? Yes. What about something like that? We, but, but by the way, okay, this maybe relates to this suggestion a bit. This is pretty similar, both in what it does and in its syntax to, um, what's it called, bounding region, I think? Yes. It has region in its name, first of all. Yeah, um, I mean, we generally, we've tried to, <laughs> mostly, we've ended in region when it produces a region. And if it's more specific, like mesh, it ends in mesh. But if the summary name, yeah. And this. But this kind of makes it sound like it could be a fitted region. It does. Instead of region fit. That's true. Or maybe fitting region. True. Well, I mean, that's, that, look, fitted region, fitted mesh or fitted hull mesh? Does it matter fitted versus fitting? I just think fitting is a little bit more whimsical and weird. I'm not sure though. For some reason, Stephen, you insisted on when we did tra transform region, you wanted it changed to transformed region. Oh, sorry, distribution. And, uh, yeah, and then the same thing happened with region, actually. Right, right, right. But we don't want to transform because that's that's it is it is a it is an object. It is not the action of transforming it. Right. That's what's the argument you gave then too. But so, okay, let's look at fitted region and fitted mesh. Okay, is there a reason to say fitted hull mesh? Or is it sufficient to say fitted mesh? I think fitted mesh. I mean, I don't know what hole adds to it. Okay, but then fitted mesh would have a method option which would give this surface plot 3D type fit as well. I the reason, it's... what's that? I mean, so, so one of them, it goes through all the points. It goes through points. No, I, the, the one for surface, the surface plot 3D does not. I know it does not go through points. That's why I'm saying the hull part. What, what on earth does hull mean anyway? Well, hull usually means an outer boundary of something, because like a, the hull of a ship. Well, but, I mean, the, the name of the convex hull, I think it was just the case that when alpha is big enough, you end up to have a, a concave hull. When alpha is big enough, you end up to have a convex hull, right? And since, you know, for some most of alpha, you you know the object is concave, so people call it concave hole instead of alpha yeah. Shift. I know, but the, okay, fine, but 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 okay, most but so of it has nothing to do the, with the hull of the ship, which is an right. outer boundary, right? Exactly. But 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 most of the holes used mathematically are these like a linear hole means a linear combination of things, a convex hole means a convex combination of things, a conic hole. And a convex combination is a is a is a sum with positive coefficient that, yeah, that right. sum to one, and a conic hull is a is a, again a sum a combination of things where the coefficients are positive. But it's always outer boundaries. I mean, that's what that isn't that correct? That's what the saying the coefficients are positive is a statement that you've got to always be outside of these things, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's because most of the time it's the so, object actually is full. It's a full dimension, so you kind of you always think about the outer boundary, right? But it doesn't have to be restricted to the outer boundary. So. I'm liking fitted mesh and fitted region. I do too. I think those are okay. So then the question is: for fitted mesh, do we have do we have an automatic way to pick the alpha value? Hmm. You mean for convex hull mesh? At least right now, yes, we have a method to actually, you know, we... we, we Con conical mesh, yeah. Con concave 
Yeah. Oh, okay. We're okay. now yeah, calling yeah. fitted mesh. Yes, right. Which you can't right. even remember the previous name. So no, that's a good no. reason. That's a well, reason I'm too possible. many holes that we. Yes. Oh, right. Okay, but in any case. But let let that be sure. You know, concave. I mean, the fitted mesh it doesn't mean by default that we are going to use the concave hole mesh method, right? It's a general reconstruction techniques. Sure. So yes. the new function concave hole mesh is a special case. I don't particularly care. I mean, I okay. don't think it's the right thing. I don't think that's the right thing. I think it should be a method option for fitted mesh because I just don't think it's that okay. important of a, right? So, so let's not have a specific function for this. Let's just have fitted mesh, which right now has one method. Or two methods. Yeah, yeah when, two methods would be nice. So we also kill um, Poisson mesh? No, uh, in that case, three methods. <laughs> Is Poisson mesh just the same as fitted mesh? No. But just a different method? Yes. Yes, you can also look at it as a fitted mesh. Everything can fall in that category. It's just a fitting, you know, reconstruction issue. Then that's what I think we should do, especially so, since this doesn't seem to have a lot of options to it. Well, sorry, sorry. One thing I didn't understand but, about this Poisson mesh thing. I mean, does it require the normals? Because it says it takes the, oriented points, but I don't know how those are represented. So Poisson mesh is a general technique recognizing the whole community for cost, you know, reconstruction. And in principle, you need to give it a you know oriented point, point with normals. But if you give us a set of points without normal, we can always estimate normal. So there's a standard technique to estimate normals right? by taking the neighborhood and reconstructing the, you know, the corresponding plane, and then you get you know normals from it. Which can point in two directions then. Pardon? I mean, you have to... Take right. The right. two possible directions that you can have a normal from a plane. Right. But right. This, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, for our technical... Okay, the, the question here. Okay, we've agreed we're going to have fitted mesh, fitted region. They're going to have method options. The question is, do we also have the special functions of things like Poisson mesh? And that's really a judgment call because the question, you know, like like for that um, for the for the fitted region thing, you're not having a separate ransack function, right? That's ransack is just a method. Right. right? Well, so, well, I will argue that at least in the design that for that fitted region, or we are calling region fit. You know, ransack is a so standard techniques and so common, like we have, you know, linear regression, right? That's essentially the same similarity when you do, you know, fitting for region. So that's the name, that's the brand, that's the... I understand, but we don't have a function called ransack, do we? It's a method for fitted region or region fit or whatever, right? We don't have that function. So the question is, you're saying that's an important brand, but then maybe we should have a function for that, although I do not think we should. But then the question is, is concave hull or alpha shape important enough that it gets its own function, or is it just a method for fitted region, for fit, uh, fitted mesh? Is that the same level as con convex, you know, convex hole mesh, Delaney mesh? No, it's not. Mesh? No, it's not. No, it's not. It depends on the I community mean, and what you're doing. I mean, Stephen, is what I mean. You know, if yes, but that's the point. That's the judgment call, right? Okay. The lawn eye meshes are something people, you know, regularly talk about in a somewhat more general way. I mean, it's like in the neural net world. You know, in the neural net world, there are people for whom, you know, every different weird configuration of whatever is, is a network that is their personal friend. I mean, I, I think that the, the the real difference, though, I think between like Delanoi mesh and this would be that, like a Delanoi mesh, like a the, a Delanoi mesh is the product. Like it's not like oh, I'm trying to reconstruct a mesh. Yeah, you know, there is no other way of referring to what a Delanoi mesh is other than by saying it's a Delanoi mesh, and also it's a building block for many other things. Right? Very infrequently is that the end goal. Usually, that's just like something you're computing along the way. But this is like you know, I want to reconstruct a mesh. Okay, I'm going to use this method for it. It's exactly the same as, con I mean, I won't argue with that, but it's essentially the same as, you know, concave hole mesh. I mean, when you're in that community and the way it was coming from, there's no, at least for me, there's no difference between the Loni mesh and- No, but, but what, what the point well, that Christopher is making is, one thing is the goal is to get a mesh. 
but it's not but, but, a not, so 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 what you was, what we're saying is that the brand of Voronoi and Delaunay is long established and they have certain special properties those meshes have certain special properties which are relevant when they're used as building blocks for additional things other kinds of meshes like these concave you know hull meshes or whatever probably don't have those special properties. They're just, oh, I've got a good mesh. Now I can go use it for something else. No, they, they do have properties. That's the thing. The point is that, you know, people introduce it because you, you know, they yeah, are when you properties that I'm, I'm there, there are two kinds of properties. One is properties coming in and the other one is going out. Something like a Voronoi diagram has properties coming out that are useful for the next thing in the pipeline, which aren't just, oh, I got this, these regions out of this, you know, cloud of points. Whereas for other things, it's just like, once I've got a region, I don't really care where that region came from. It doesn't, it, you know, there, there are mathematical properties that of that output that are beyond just, it is some kind of mesh type thing. Does that make sense? I mean, are there properties of this concave hull mesh? You know, a convex hull there are many properties. For example, there's no point outside the convex hull, right? That's an important property. There's no point that is, you know, well, whatever it is. I don't know what, you know, I when, mean, when you, I, I, I guess the thing, the, the, the thing is there was, I mean, with, with maybe with convex hull mesh, but definitely with Voronoi mesh and with Delanoi mesh, you know, the whole point is those properties, right? The, the mesh itself is almost like who cares? Cause it's just that you're going to, you're going to use that output. And given that, you know, the properties of these types of meshes, you're going to, you know, use that to compute something else. But with this, you know, even if there are some special nice mathematical properties of say, you know, a Poisson mesh or whatever, it may be that 90% of people that use it just don't care. They just want a mesh that looks kind of like, you know, a two yeah, I, think the, I think there are two, sort of, those are the two cases. I mean, I think that there are casual users that just want a mesh and fitted mesh is great. Okay. The, the automation. Then there are things, then there are the use cases where people want a specifically a Delaunay mesh. No, 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 not Delaunay. Delaunay is a special case as yeah. a convex hull. Yeah, yeah. Because those so things the, have, no, no, but those, those but, are outward facing properties, right? Yes. That's my question. I, Does Poisson mesh have outward facing properties? You see yes. what I'm saying? What are they? You know, I mean, the, the whole the whole game here, right, is essential is, you know, how long the object has been established and how many applications and people No, it's use not it. that. No, it's not that, Charles. I'm making a different definition here, okay? The different definition is this. There's one thing is, what is the brand of fit? Okay, that's one thing. Okay, but is the other the... thing is, what are you going to use the fit for? If the so, fit has the property, no, I, for example, I agree. an interpolation is different from a fit. It's useful to know that something is an interpolation because you know it goes through all the points. Right. So, right? For, for example, so the pos con the pos concave mesh. hole, does it, are all the points inside? For example, the, the Poisson mesh, you can, you can well, defense. We don't of, know. Do we know or don't we know? Pardon? For concave hull mesh. Yeah, I think all, all the points are inside. Yeah, I, I think, think so all too. Do. Are all well, the points inside? Charles, what's the answer to that? When you see all the point inside, yeah, Does well, it, there's no point it, it, that it, it, is it, in, in this picture. If when alpha is small enough, you end up with an empty set, right? There is those type of property you have. I mean, because it's the size of the ball. So if the essentially when no, you think but, about but, it, but when you construct it, I think that all the points are in fact no, inside. No, you, you have the case of the empty set where the concave hole will give you an empty set when but alpha is small gonna... enough. Because the ball, as long as the ball is smaller than the the mean size, this you know, the smallest. As long as you can have a ball, a small ball enough, which cover all the points but doesn't cover two of them, you get an empty set. Right. It, it, you you can have disconnected. This can return a disconnected mesh. Exactly. So if, you, if, if if the so, alpha is tiny, every point is its own component, right? Well, right. and actually, it's empty because actually, when you really Why? think about, is it, is it always connected? No. No. So essentially, when you think about it, you know, really, roughly speaking, you, you build a Delaunay mesh, and then you cover those mesh with balls. And you just take the edges where, you know, two points are inside those balls. That's pretty much the, the base idea. So if you really think about it, that means in some cases you'll have empty sets. 
or you'll have disconnected object. And the reason it's an empty set is because a single point on its own withers. It needs to have something that it can be meshed to, so to speak. Exactly, in that regions of the lead ball. Like so. mm -hmm. Well, okay. I'm uh, not this convinced. is very relevant for persistent homology stuff, although I think you would need to keep the, the you would not let the points wither, but that's this is off topic. Yes. Well, but okay, but the question here. I, I guess, I mean, I, about the Poisson mesh stuff, I don't know. I mean, like, for example, when I look up Poisson mesh, all the things I find, everything but one link calls it a Poisson surface reconstruction, which kind of makes me think that it's like, you know, the end goal is to get a surface reconstruction, not to get some mesh with certain extremely specific properties that only this mesh has. I, I think that these things, I think it should be called, I think what should happen is this should be, they should both be fitted mesh. This should be method arrow Poisson. Another one, the other one should be method arrow, either alpha shape or concave hull. And both of those names for the method should be supported. That would be my suggestion. And the, and the third method is whatever the method is for list surface plot 3D. What is that method? What is that method called? Well, they say pests. They say there's no method. I think what uh, least surface plus 3D is doing is just computing the sine distance function. And when you have the sine distance function, it does a contour, you know, it called, you know, least contour plot 3D. On okay, it. so then we could call it contour. That method could be called contour. Does that make sense? And then hold on, what, what is the function that returns primitives called again? Fitted region. And what's this one called? Fitted mesh or Fitted something? Fitted mesh. Since it does return okay. a mesh. Definitively returns a mesh. I mean, it's, so, it's a little weird because, you know, you, you know, meshes are also regions, but, but I guess, it's, I guess that works. Well, at least. Do we have it, any other functions where, where there's a region version and a mesh version, and this is kind of what happens? What do, what is well, we, we, we have you know, convex whole mesh and convex whole region, but where it's, you know... Wait, wait, well, what is convex whole region? It's the thing Co that can compute the convex whole of any right. region. Like a so, disk should be a disk, right? Yeah, the convex whole of a disk is a disk. It's a disk. I see. So it symbolically computes it rather than returning a mesh object. Sometimes it returns a mesh object because it needs to approximate. We don't have, you know, that, that's, yeah, it, it, it needs to. So it's a little weird though, because it, the, the first usage of convex hull region is just convex hull mesh, is it not? Um, I'm looking at the documentation. If you get a list of points, the convex hull is the same as convex hull well, mesh. Well, so we could do the same right. thing here. I mean, fitted region could allow as one of its, quotes primitives, mesh. So fitted mesh is what you do if you know that you want to have a mesh as output. You know you want that approximating mesh. And fitted region is what you do if you, you know, if you, you might be forced into having, look, the default for a fitted region, well, a fitted region has no default, presumably. A fitted mesh has a default automatic thing that generates a mesh. A fitted region, you would normally be telling it what kind of region to fit to. Right. Although I have to admit, fitted region. Yeah, I mean it's sort of okay if it if it just insists on a second argument and you tell it, I want a mesh, I want a circle, I want whatever. That doesn't seem terrible to me. And you could also you can say you want a convex hull as the fitted region. Well, I would guess okay if that last thing exists, well. I'm sort of, uh, I'm wondering, I mean, wh why does convex hull mesh exist if convex hull region also exists? I'm just, you know, if that's a mistake, then we don't want to make the same thing here. Yeah, why does it? Right. Well, one for us, first the precedence, but we first had convex hull mesh because it was, you know, it was part of that, you know, subsystem sure. of mesh. And then we extended it for all arbitrary regions. So. Right. But I mean, is there a reason, like, you know, should it be, just fitted region here. But then you are, you are mixing two things. That's what I'm trying to say here. 
we want to do surface reconstruction and then we want to do fitting. It's two different goals because fitting assume you may have outlier, you have noisy data. We have technique to, to fix that. When you, so you do surface reconstruction, there is, you know, that level of noise is not the same and the technique you use are different. So merging those two, right? We are just merging two different goals from fitting and surface reconstruction into one thing. How about reconstruction mesh or reconstructed me reconstruction mesh? Reconstructed, since you've been on well, the Well, yeah, I understand. But, but the, the reason for not reconstructed is it's kind of a crazy name because why, is, why do you think there was anything there to begin with? Do you see what I'm saying? Reconstructed is, yes, if you've got a point cloud of a thing, I mean, you're assuming that there is a source for the point cloud Maybe you could say like approximating mesh or something. I yeah. think that's obscure. Though. But I mean, a is also different, right? I mean. Yeah, but actually, I like reconstruction. So I, I don't want to uh, sour us on it. I think it's a pretty good name because I think Wait, it will be rec rec recognized a lot. Reconstruction mesh. Reconstructed mesh. Well, okay. So then that would be the thing for concave hull mesh and Poisson mesh. And also list surface plot mesh. And then the other one will be called fitted region. And that would be fitting to a region, to a specialized region. Right. That makes kind of sense. Um, the only thing, okay, region. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, given that you take, say what type of region it is. Um, reconstruction mesh. Okay, reconstruction what, what? mesh or reconstructed mesh? Why not mesh reconstruction? No, it should end with mesh, really. You know, it's, it's fabulous to see, you know, surface reconstruction, mesh reconstruction. I'm sorry, you got used to the name. I mean, it's... it's... <laughs> okay. Yeah, it really should end with mesh. Given the well, what about reconstruct mesh? I mean, well, what's actually what what's the logic between when we use verbs versus nouns? There is no logic. It's... Well, it's the logic is attempting to be a noun is a thing that could be symbolic, and a verb is when you know it's going to compute something. Yes. Then, so, then couldn't it be reconstruct mesh? For some reason, because the mesh is such a, I mean, it's such a symbolic thing itself that doesn't feel quite right. I mean, you know, a verb, when it produces an answer like 13 or something, the verb makes perfect sense. When the thing that is happening produces something that is itself symbolic, where well, it's not even clear it did anything. Don't we have a repair mesh? Yes. Not repaired what mesh. What does repair mesh do? It repairs it. It, it is for three D printing, I think. Okay. Yeah, like that it, was the main use. Yeah, but that, that 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 takes a mesh and returns a mesh. Yes. This takes points and returns a mesh. Does that make yeah. it different? I prefer reconstruction mesh. Construction mesh surface um, because people always say recon surface reconstruction, right? Yes. That is the process of reconstructing meshes. I, I don't know. I, I think reconstruction meshes sounds especially weird to me. Like it sounds like it should at least be reconstructed mesh. Well, but the whole point is that it is it is the mesh that is the reconstruction. It's, it's a similar thing to like the, the the feature extraction, feature extractor, feature extracted, you know, whatever. I mean. The, the shun t-i-o-n ending kind of sounds like it's going to produce a function that, that's going to uh you're going to use many times or something yeah okay fair point well i don't like reconstruct mesh particularly given repair mesh
I have to say, because surface reconstruction, you know, with that form is is such a common um Well, I think we should try living with reconstruction mesh, see how we like it. Yeah, well, for the on our live stream saying, why reconstruct rather than construct? Um, yeah, well, right, that was, but, but it, that's what it's called. It's called surface reconstruction, not, con that's why I prefer reconstruction because it is sort of a brand of thing rather than reconstruct because there wasn't anything to construct it from and to begin with. I think the idea is that there was some, you know, you're only going to run this when there was some underlying surface and then it got sampled into a bunch of points and I now know. you need to reconstruct it. I know, but but, but so there was an original surface. Right. That is the that is the meta concept, I think. But <clears throat> I'm favoring reconstruction mesh. I, 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 and fitted region. That would be my suggestion. Let, let's try and see whether we can get through the other things here. But that's that would be my suggestion. What what is the name going to be for the option that gives the size of the alpha ball? That's only applicable to concave hole mesh. So it has to be a method sub option. In this, yeah, I wouldn't do it that way. Slow. That's really obscure. Let's at least have it be a top level method option, and it just is ignored for the other methods. Is tolerance a reasonable option name? A reason, yeah, reasonable option name. But tolerance have a different meaning. That's... Tolerance has different meaning in every time it's used, yes. and we need to actually mount an effort to document what tolerance means better. But isn't you're that... thinking of like threshold or something? Like maybe. In, in fitted, fitted region, we have a tolerance. Yeah, what does it mean? Well, we need to explain yeah. it. Right. Yeah, and isn't, doesn't well, it mean essentially the same thing as these alpha balls? Um, no, the alpha no. ball is the, that alpha is really part of the parametrization, it's not part of the tolerance. Well, you know, like in fitted region, the tolerance is more the yeah, okay, think something can be that off. far off. Basically, tolerance is it can be that far off, and we'll ignore it being that far off. Exactly. So you, how... That's like a numerical approximation, epsilon kind of thing, right? It's going to be some tiny number. Yes. But as opposed to the size, I mean, what is the right description of the size of this ball? This is this is the same well, thing that will be used for Hausdorff dimension estimators and things like that. So actually, wait, first. First question though, is it is it actually the radius or is it one over the radius? It's surely got to be the radius. If it's not the radius, there's something horribly wrong. It is the radius, isn't it, Charles? Mm. It's one over in, the radius. In, in our no, design, it can't be one over the radius. That's in our crazy. design, in our design is the radius. If we define alpha shape, it should be a one over the radius. Well, it shouldn't. Let's not have it one over the radius. It well, let's not radius. call it alpha then, for God's sake. Yeah, That's well, why we don't call it alpha ship. <laughs> well, it's good. No, but, okay, but the, 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 let's not alpha. Uh, yeah, yeah and right. No, no. Okay, so what's the name and what other functions have this kind of thing? So this is essentially, it's covering a region. Do, hasn't this happened in other region functionality? You're covering it with balls of some kind, right? Isn't that, doesn't that come up in, in um, the uh, um, mesh, uh, what was that called? Um, the the, the um, region mesh, Connectivity graph doesn't doesn't something like this come up in mesh connectivity graph? No, no, um, no. Where else does it come up? This thing about covering things with balls. Top of my head, I don't think we have a function where we have a, any type of covering or parametrization of that sort in terms of reconstruction. Well, if that's if that's the case, then maybe we need a thing here that is called something like. I mean, maybe we should be very specific. Coloring ball radius. I mean, if it were an argument, it would just be R and it would be the radius, right? Yes. I don't know. It, it sounds it's like, I, I, I'm not sure what, I mean, sure, there, there, there are other methods that, that involve, uh, you know, putting a bunch of balls over the region, but I don't know if they're always covering balls or something like that. I mean, also the balls don't, I don't, 
I don't think they necessarily cover like as in a covering. Yeah, fair set. enough. So, and like Roger point out, if you merge all this in one function, right, that parameter, Which we are. Then covering ball cannot apply to all methods. Then you have to be a sub-option. We understand option. that. No, it doesn't have to be a sub-option. It can be an option which is ignored for the other methods. Oh, okay. Reconstruction mesh, and then it's the points. That's it. I mean, and opts. Yeah, I know it's opts, but but the question but is... There, there, there might be form, you know, it's like this, you might want other properties out of it and stuff, but we even if we don't have them now, we should think that... Look, we this might thing is get some it. kind of granularity, it's some kind of... what What is the general name for this kind of concept? It's not quite tolerance, it's something similar to tolerance, but it's not quite tolerance. What you can talk about in terms of the algorithm, where it's like a radius, or you can talk about in terms of the result, where it's like feature size or a granularity or something. Yeah, that's that's right. It's some kind of feature size. If we were going to do min feature size or something. Yeah. What's the what's the thing called for um, meshes that they for for triangulate mesh for example? Um, the screen the, the max cell measure. Yeah. Max cell measure. Okay, that's a bit different. What is the difference between max cell measure and and this? Or min? Is there a min? Max uh, cell measure. What the uh, heck is that? That is just the uh, upper point. Actually, it it allows you to control the discretization, how fine it's going to get, which is kind of the same concept as this. It's a little bit complicated if you go into it. I've no yeah, doubt. Like it can take a function as it's. It can yeah, because it can vary over the region, and it can yes. and it can be as a function of you know. What is it like? How long is the longest side versus what's the area of the cell versus right? Well, it's, you know, I mean, th this is you know, like many of these approximation techniques, triangulation is a is an art. You know, how pointy can the triangle? I mean, this is is this does this address how pointy the triangles can get? And things? No, but, but we run the, the the triangulation methods that we use guarantee a certain level of quality. That this one does not well, reject. I, what, what is it's not necessarily bad quality to have a long nosed triangle. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah. But it depends. depends off the use, right? Yeah. But, but for the uses we have, you know, like finite element, it is bad. Right. Very okay. Bad. But fine. But so, but, but, but so we're not parameterizing. All right. So we need some option here. I think this is a more, I mean, in my use of, these surface reconstruction things, I can tell you that I have always ended up experimenting with that with that granularity parameter. Mm -hmm. it, it essentially never works automatically. Yeah, now, I can believe that. You know, I, I um, particularly when you're reconstructing things with these, with, you know, graph embeddings and so on, which are kind of weird objects that aren't really surfaces. I mean, that's a great example of where surface reconstruction is what you would call it. But in fact, there's nothing to reconstruct because there wasn't a surface to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what is the what is the kind of? I mean, it's a feature size. It's a. There's got to be some other place where we have an analogous situation. Image I mean, processing, machine learning. Is there some place? I mean, I think cell 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 size. You know, is kind of what you. Yeah, with the to. cell sizes like a million things are, <sighs> but it's a radius. Well, I mean, that's the question. It's a radius if you're thinking about it in terms of how does the algorithm work, which is would be nice if you want to explain how, you know, what this is and the details and options. But, you know, if you're just thinking about, if, if you're just thinking about in terms of the result, then it's just yeah, feature understand. size. But, but I mean, again, it would be nice probably if you can document that, oh yes, you're not gonna have any edges that are shorter than the feature size or something like that. Well, is that what it radius. is? Maybe it's the min, I see. You're saying, I don't know. Okay, why don't you guys think about this? We're gonna need to come back to it. Sure. Um, oh boy, look at all this stuff. Yeah, it's going to take us one more round for sure. Well, but I mean, we've got, hold on a second. Let, let's just see what the calendar situation is here. 
Um, we were about to go on doing video. What was the what was the big thing we'd run into with video here? There was a uh, big issue we'd run into. Uh, we're in sort of video generation mode. Um, I know that you wanted John Fultz and Christina Bateman there for the yeah. First she's hour. they're gonna be there for the first hour for the player the the UI for the player. All right. Let's just have a quick look at what else you've got here. And, and that then... means that they have been waiting now, probably. Yes. For yes, a long or time. their full hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm. Uh, th that's what happens. These things are complicated. What can I say? Um. Okay. Hold on. The. How much? How complicated is this? It's not complicated. Those two are not complicated. The only thing that you're going to be wanting to spend time on is to understand congruent and similar. Well, I'll probably discuss, you know, region transform with respect to find geometric transform. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. That one too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yippee doodle do. Does this really work? 3D you said the exact same, same yeah. sentence <laughs> yeah, last I said time. last time. <laughs> did, what was the answer? Does it in fact work? Um, the same answer, not yet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's that's um. Uh, oh boy. Okay, we finally got a a symbolic language for lighting. That's a good thing, as opposed to these weird list things. Is that right? Yes. That's a good thing. Even a spotlight isn't. Yeah, that's good. That's nice. Okay. Okay. Well, we got to reschedule this for another, at least another hour. Yep. Um, and then let's switch now, I guess, to the video stuff. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to, uh, are we on the same, we're going to be using the same uh, live stream and so on? It's a different meeting. Okay, all right, then I'm, I'm okay, let's, okay, people who are, who are following the live stream, we will go to a different live stream because we'll have a different title and nobody will ever find it if we, if we leave it with the same title. And so I am going to, do I need to send you this notebook or do you have everything you, you need from this notebook? I assume the notes are going to come out. Yep, I'll send out some notes, and there's a recording. Um, you can send me the notebook just to be safe, Stephen, and I'll send it okay. out. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of very nice stuff here, guys. This is really good. Um, and I look forward to seeing the remainder of it here. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let's switch to the other, other thing and we'll see people, um, back in a few minutes. Okay.